do this course, you need a WordPress website. If you've already got a WordPress site, then you can carry on to the next lesson and skip this one. And if you haven't, then keep watching. In case you don't know, WordPress is a platform for building websites. It's the biggest web building platform in the world. Um, millions and millions of websites across the world use it. Probably about a third of all websites globally are powered by WordPress. And WordPress makes it really easy for you to manage your website because you can easily add pages and things like that without needing any technical knowledge. So that's why WordPress is an excellent basis for any type of website. And instead of showing you how to install WordPress directly, I'll recommend a web host which will actually come with WordPress pre-installed on it. So that makes it a bit easier for you. So this lesson is about create buying a domain name, which will be your website address and adding a web host that has WordPress on it. So first over to domain names. Your domain name is your website address. If you already own one, then you can edit the settings for your existing domain name and point it at your WordPress website so that when people type that into their web browsers or look for it on the Internet, on Google or something, then they will view your website with the ordering that you have set up on it. And uh, if you haven't got one yet, then you can go to any website that sells domain names. Um, this one is called Namecheap, which is quite good, namecheap.com. Uh, but there are any number of domain name registrars that you can use, and it really doesn't matter which one you use. And once you've got a domain name, you also need web hosting. Web hosting actually keeps your website on the Internet. And we recommend a managed WordPress host called Kinster. This is what we use for all of the Barn2 websites. And Kinster is really good because it just makes things easy for you. So they'll install WordPress for you. And it's got loads of extra features like daily backups. You can very easily roll back to your latest backup if anything ever goes wrong. You can create free staging sites to play around with without affecting your live site. And lots of stuff like that. Kinster has various plans which you can um, choose from to get what you need. Most people following this course are likely to be fine with the starter plan, which is just $30 a month. Um, if you want to go even cheaper, then there are cheaper hosts and out of all the cheaper ones, I would recommend SiteGround. But I would say that with a managed host that specialises in WordPress like Kinster, it's just going to be that bit easier for you and your website will load faster and just generally be more reliable. So uh, there are standard hosts like SiteGround that are perfectly good and they'll keep your website online, no problem. But I would say go for Kinster just because it's that much easier for you and that's why we use them. So you sign up to a hosting plan with Kinster and once you've done that, they will give you a dashboard. If you're using a different host, you'll just need to follow their instructions, but I'll show you how to do it in Kinster now. From the Kinster dashboard, click on the sites link on the left, and then you'll see an add site button in the top right corner. This opens up a window which you'll use to create the general settings for your website and install WordPress as well. So leave the default install WordPress option ticked and that will install WordPress itself for you. If you've already got an address for your website, then enter it there. So it might be mywebsite.com. Um, if you haven't, then don't worry. Kinster will create a temporary domain name for you until you've got that sorted out later. Add a website address here. I'm going to call it my WordPress website, but it doesn't matter what you call it. Choose a location which is near to where your customers are based. So if you're in the UK, but you're targeting the US market, then you'd want to choose a US data center. If you're in the UK and you're targeting the UK market, then you would choose London, UK and so on. So this is about the speed of your website, really. If the website data center, which actually stores the data for your website, is near to your customers, it will just load that bit more quickly. So it's best to choose a data center that's as close to your customers as possible. The WordPress site title, username and password are used for the admin area, which only you and your colleagues will see. It's not for the public. So you can call it whatever you want. Uh, the admin username will be how you log into the WordPress admin area. So you could call it until it's happy. Either enter your own password or allow it to auto generate one for you. And I'm going to copy my password so that I can log in in a minute. 
enter your email address which um, will be used for admin related notifications so that might be new comments if you have comments enabled on your site it might be information about errors or something like that you need to know so choose a language ignore the multi sites unless you specifically want that uh, we will install WooCommerce later in the course, but let's leave that box unticked for now because I'm going to show you how to do that later, uh, which will involve a couple of extra steps like running through a setup wizard to make it easier for you. So we'll leave that uh, blank. But yes, let's install Yoast SEO because that will help with our search engine position. And then we click add site. Kinster will then think for a bit and once it's finished thinking and setting up your website on your list of sites you will see the website that you just created so click on that now so this is the dashboard for that specific site that you just created uh, most of the stuff is technical and you don't need to know it but if you've already got a website address then you'll want to add a domain here so let's say you've bought the website address mywebsite.com you probably want it to work with and without www so you would tick that box and then you would click add domains and if you haven't got one yet just do that later on as well as doing that in kinster you have to log into the company that you bought the domain name from so your domain name registrar and you will have to update the dns settings for that domain name to point to the website so the actual domain name has to point to the location of the website on Kinster in order for it to work at that address. So to do that, we go into the info tab in Kinster and you want to find the site IP address here. And you can just click here to copy to clipboard. That is what you need to enter into the DNS settings for your domain. And I recommend that you look at your the documentation or ask for help from your domain name company to tell them exactly the, what the record should say. So tell them that you want to point your domain name to the location of your website at this IP address or whatever it says in your own Kinster account, of course and they will be able to get the website domain name pointing to the website so that when people type it into their browser address bar, uh, that domain name will show your website. And that's it. So when you log into your WordPress website, so you would go to your domain name and then slash WP admin, or if you haven't got that, then you see here Kinsta's created some temporary addresses for you. So whatever your main domain is at the moment, then you'll see it here under the primary domain. So you can click to open the website directly or you can click to open the WordPress admin and it will take you to your domain name forward slash WP slash admin. And at that point, you will enter the username and password that you created a minute ago when you set up the site and then you're in.